everybody, it's Paul from NukeMed, and today we're going to talk about what a HIDA scan is, or hepatobiliary scan is. Uh, basically, that just means we're going to be looking at your gallbladder. And with nuclear medicine, we're going to, again, we're going to look at how things are functioning. Now, one question you might have is, well, Paul, I don't have a gallbladder right now. Uh, and then I would probably say, well, they're probably looking for a bio leak at that particular point in time. It can happen after surgery. I think out of all the different... Um, times I've done a HIDA scan, probably about 10% of the time we're looking for a bio leak. It generally happens pretty much right after surgery. If you're not feeling very well and you've just had your gallbladder removed, the doctor may order it for that. Uh, and that test will last about 60 minutes. Um, and uh, we'll talk about the prep right now for uh, the gallbladder. And we'll talk a little bit more once we get into there about the other type of symptoms you could be having and experiencing, uh, which would lead your doctor to order a HIDA test. So as always, I was depending where you're having the test done, I would call them to get the details because every department's different on how they do stuff. When I talk to you about a procedure today, it's very general. And again, remember, I've been retired for about 10 years now, so things have changed. Um, but I'll just sort of tell you what you can expect. Um, and like I said, talk to the department's going to be doing this because they'll give you specifics on how they do the exam. Because again, not everybody's the same. Actually, two things I want to talk about before we dive a little deeper into the protocol and stuff like that. Uh, the reasons why, I want to talk about the reasons why you generally have a gallbladder test. We talked briefly about having a bile leak, but then also the big one is cholecystitis, uh, basically meaning the gallbladder is um, inflamed and it's hard to be in a hard time squeezing. Um, you can also have bile duct obstructions. I'm reading this off of the Mayo Clinic, uh, congestional problems in the bile ducts or post-operative complications. Again, we'll talk about the bile leaks. Um, so the other big thing that you need to figure out is the prep. And the prep for a HIDA scan is generally we do not want you to have anything to eat or drink. Uh, I think Mayo says four hours. We did eight hours. So this was one definitely you need to call the clinic or where you're having this done at and ask them, is it four to eight hours that you need to be MPO? So MPO means nothing by mouth. So that includes water. That includes um, food. It might include your meds. So again, give them a call. Make sure you know what you can and can't do. So typically when you came in uh, for your procedure, I normally had you in the camera room and then I would lay you down. I would explain the procedure to you, make sure you didn't have any questions, make sure you didn't have to use the restroom. Uh, once that was, once you were done with that, then I would place an IV in your anacubital. I don't use a very big one, at least for me, when I was doing it, I was use 22s. I know some people are gonna be like, oh, why so small? Uh, I just like, it did the job and it didn't have to be in there very long. If I was putting an IV in for a long-term stay, yes, I'd put a bigger one in, but we used a fairly small one. It was blue. Uh, sometimes people use pinks, which is a 20, which works just fine as well too. Um, so basically uh, we have you lying down and then we place you underneath the camera. Now the camera doesn't make any noise and the camera doesn't uh, emit any radiation at all. Um, it does get fairly close though to you because the closer we are, the better your pictures are. Um, in x-ray, normally the camera has to stay a little bit of ways in order to get a good picture. But for us in nuclear medicine, that camera is going to be basically right on your chest. Um, generally, your head is not underneath the camera. Again, it depends on the type of camera they have. Uh, generally, the, the technologists are there in the room with you. At least I was when I had to do these particular pictures. Um, so I was there to talk to them. Uh, we don't want you moving around. You can breathe normally. You don't have to hold your breath or anything like that. But once you're positioned, we'll give you an injection through that IV. Put a little, um, and it's going to be what they call like Colatec or Mebrofenin. Uh, there's no side effects. This is not a contrast or a dye. So there's no iodine associated with this. So you're not going to feel hot or sweaty or get sick or anything like that. Uh, so once they give you that injection, um, what happens next is we just sort of watch that get into your liver and it takes a little while for it to get into your liver. Um, now, typically people take, uh, I think 60 one minute pictures. And so every minute it takes a picture and the pictures are sort of like, um, exposures for long periods of time. So that, so that one minute picture is an exposure for one minute. And what I mean by that is basically it's taking in the radiation or it's allowing, it's, we're seeing the radiation that's coming off of you. It's not shooting any radiation into you. All the radiation is coming out of you. Actually, the radiation comes out to you within uh, 360 degrees worth of direction. Uh, but the, the way the camera works, it just is going to pick up where it's in front of you. So we take pictures for about 60 minutes and we're looking for your gallbladder. Um, and I'll put some pictures up of what a typical um, HIDAS test looks like. Uh, so you'll see a little outshape of the liver. Uh, you'll see a little 
piece uh, down at the bottom of the liver, which would be your gallbladder, probably should see some small intestines. Um, now, typically, when we do a HIDA scan, they're normally going to want it to do it with EF. And you're probably wondering, what does that mean? EF means ejection fractions. So we're going to squeeze your gallbladder. Okay, maybe that was a little too violent. <laughs> Back in the day, that's actually what we used to do. We So there's a, the, a drug that we gave you called Kinovac, or otherwise known as Syncolide. And what it does is squeezes your gallbladder. And it's something that your body naturally uses. Um, and so back in the day, though, they used to give the Kinovac or Syncolide over five minutes. And that was excruciating pain. People got sick with that. And they didn't get a very good results in terms of ejection fraction. So nowadays, typically speaking, at least when I was doing it, we, gave, we did another 30 to 45 minutes. And we put it in a pump and we gave it really slowly. So then you have a very slow and gradual sort of squeeze. Um, and I had this particular test on myself because I had my gallbladder taken out um, and my ejection fraction was only 5%, uh, which is not good. Uh, typical normal ejection fractions are between 30 and 35%. So you don't need to squeeze a ton. Um, and so, uh, so some of the things just to keep in mind, um, normally what happens after the first set of pictures, the technologist is probably gonna get you up have you go to the restroom if you need to. Uh, we typically have to show this to the doctor to make sure that they, they're the ones that allow us to give syncolide. We just don't do that on our own. So we go to the doctor, say, hey, this is what we see. Um, and we have to see a little bit of small intestine going through the screen just to make sure there's no, we, we don't like to give Kinovac or syncolide if there is a possibility that there could be a obstruction in the small intestine. So uh, we have to make sure we see the doctor. Sometimes if we don't see the gallbladder or the small intestines right away, we normally wait another 15, 20 minutes, take some more pictures, and eventually it shows up. Sometimes we get you up and have you use the bathroom because that'll help move things along, believe it or not. Um, so one thing, the, so sometimes when you're doing this particular test, sometimes we have to give you morphine. And you're probably like, why do you have to give me morphine? Well, if the gallbladder doesn't show up at all, and they're really concerned that there's it's not filling because maybe there's it's too full of stones or some other type of reason, we'll give you a little bit of morphine. Now, not a lot. Uh, the reason why we give you morphine is it causes the sphincter of OD to close and causes bile to back into the gallbladder. Um, and so that will help visualize the gallbladder. If we do that, we don't squeeze your gallbladder. If we're squeezing your gallbladder, we at least seen your gallbladder. So that's good. So it's either either or, we either do Kinovac or you do morphine, you don't do both. Um, so like I said, so once you get, um, again, the test is about 30, 45 minutes, we take some more pictures, um, and then you're all done. And uh, you typically don't feel a lot after that, uh, the syncolide at all. Uh, people normally don't get very ill with that, or they don't get sick. Um, there's nothing special you have to do. The nice thing is it's an enzyme that you're or enzyme or hormone that your body normally produces. So it'll, as soon as you turn it off, it goes away and your body can take care of it. So there's nothing that you have to do differently. And it's not gonna, if you start feeling pain, you know, an hour later, an hour or two later, it's not the syncolide still working. The syncolide is done and out of your system. Uh, so that's the nice thing about this particular test. Uh, so at the end of the test, the technologist will take out your IV. Um, they won't tell you the results because you always have to hear that from your, from your doctor. Um, and then they'll go through and figure out what your EF is. Again, they won't tell you that because it does take a little while to process uh, before uh, they know that. They have to put everything together and give it to the doctor so the doctor can read it and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, what the technologist does is the pictures, a set of pictures before, um, that after they give you the, the cola tech so they can just see what the gallbladder looks like. And then they had to have another set of pictures either for morphine or for that Kinovac where we can see the squeeze. If they do squeeze, they actually use a computer program to figure out what the percentage is. And again, we're just looking for anything over 30 to 35%. Again, mine was only 5%, so you can tell it wasn't working very well. And I was having pain. So it's a, it's a good test. Like I said, I've done thousands of these particular tests. Um, I haven't, uh, at least during my time, I didn't have a lot of people with a lot of symptoms or any type of um, reactions to the mebrofenin or even the syncolide since we gave it over such a long period of time. Most people might feel, they simply might feel a little pain, but not much. Uh, most people recorded their pain. I think the highest I had in all the time that I did this particular test was maybe a three out of 10. So not very much, three out of 10, it's pretty small. So well, if you have any questions, uh, let me know. I can, uh, as always, I always tell you to please refer to your 
uh, clinic that you're going to or the imaging station you're going to as they can answer your questions better because they have certain ways that they do this particular procedure. But if you have any general questions, uh, let me know and I'll do my best to explain it. Until the next video, take care and we'll see you, see you next time.